And we're back with a weekly esports podcast. What's up, all you gamers? My name is Jake. This is Hunter. We start off every podcast by reading all the lovely comments that all of you lovely people do leave us. Uh, my one comes from Justin. He says, love these. Man, you guys rock. Thanks, Justin. You rock, too. That was one of two I saved as well. The other one, of course. I saved these on my phone personally so I can look back on them. <laughs> right above it. Hunter, you're beautiful. We save nice ones. Because we don't get nice comments ever <laughs> that often. Thank you guys for all the nice comments. Keep on leaving them. We hope you all enjoy the weekly esports rewinds. Let's break her down. It, or it down. Let's break <laughs> it down. Let's break it down. <laughs> And man, oh man, the world out there is awaiting a brand new Battle Royale. I think someone like Nick Merckx, other Warzone streamers, are also joining that tide. It was actually this past week, and I'm not sure how serious to take this one because I think a lot of Warzone pros and streamers have probably said similar remarks, but around the forced dev air crashes, all the hacking, the cheating... Uh, of course, we have the kill, the the kill, the timed kill race format not really working out too well. People not liking that. There's a lot of things going on in the war zone space. Nikki Merckx was one to speak up this past week to call the game doggy doo doo uh, in in a pretty aggressive way. Also saying, hey, he was actually in a call with Cloaksy. They are awaiting Halo in its release as well. This game is so dog, shit, bro. Why do we get on this thing today? Listen, Halo's out I don't too. know. I'm down to running Halo right now. Halo, please, bro. Get like early release beta. Is there a beta? There's got to be a beta. There's always a Halo beta. This game is dog. Shit. Activision doesn't want an anti cheat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys want me to play public bot racing tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Laughable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this has been the narrative for so long. So long, With dude. so many of these content creators that maybe that's why they're even more ready for Halo. Because at first, it was kind of this nuanced thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many hackers in Warzone. They're ruining every game. And you can hype that up for a while. Hype that up on your videos or on your Twitter for a while and show clips. But then eventually, it's like... Yeah, they're just still here. Yeah, like, <laughs> is it ever going to stop? This has been going on, I feel like, for months yeah. and months. You look back to, I think it was Infinity Ward, late last year or early this year, they had to ask people to stop cheating, and that was a highlight in itself. And then the cheating just kept on coming. Then we have Hunter T. Tommy saying that, oh, yeah, randoms can now give you dev errors and crash you out of the game, and the problems just kept on coming. We've had several streamers just quit competing because it's not mm -hmm. worth it. Uh, we've seen so many results, if not you know, altered, it definitely impacted by these hackers in certain lobbies affecting some people's placements, costing many people like uh, Bobby Poff, who has complained about this frequently, thousands and thousands of dollars. So, yeah, what's the... Obviously, though, Nick Burks can go out and call this game dog crap, but then go stream it for eight hours a day. I think he is clearly wanting a new title, and we'll see if that title can actually take these guys for good, though. I don't, there's no real other option right now, unfortunately, and that's where everyone's kind of at. Counter-Strike? Counter Not even. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the one of the OG just play and banter with your friends, and that was content. And now it's turned into everyone does that on Warzone, other games you can't really do that on, so I feel like people with such massive fan bases like Tim and Cloaksy and Courage and Nick, all of them are kind of stuck for right now because they don't know what else to do that they can play together and just joke around and be casual. I just wish these guys would dabble in more than just BRs. I feel like it's been Fortnite and then it's going to be Warzone and then what's next is probably another... They're hoping for a Halo BR, yeah. so... Uh, these are guys that I would love to see pull like an XQC or maybe even uh, the other personalities out there who dove into random games. But I guess XQC can play just about anything and get viewers. Yeah. But either way, lots of Warzone streamers awaiting a new game. We will see what happens when it does because that transition from Fortnite to Warzone was very interesting. We saw all the older guys move on, all the younger cracked kids stay in Fortnite. And if we're going to have a third title then competing for that viewership, it'll be very interesting to see where all these streamers fall. And speaking of new games, Asmund Gold tries out Final Fantasy XIV for the first time, gets people in a little bit of a ruckus. I'm sure you saw it, but if you didn't, he was playing Final Fantasy, had stream snipers all over him. It was insane footage, blocking his screen with giant whales, jumping in front of his camera, 
and starting quests and then immediately being finished because people would kill the mobs around him. Yeah, it was like a throwback to when people returned to WoW for a short time. I think uh, Shroud's obviously been playing, but even people like Cloaksy and Tim made returns. We saw such a huge uh, revival of the stream sniping for that game, and then we've seen other games as well. It kind of throws me back to like RuneScape days where very clearly if people follow you around they can impact your gameplay yeah. whether it's interrupting quest lines or doing any of the sort and so to see asman by the way which uh every time i say his name i get made fun of but it's also crazy to see that man peaking at, at one point over two hundred thousand viewers for a technical mmo it's still an old game yes. at that not even a new mmo and all of a sudden he's outside of wow pulling record-breaking viewership yeah. which was funny to see because he is a noob right at final fantasy or at least he yes. was in his early beginnings yes and so he starts new and even amidst to getting overwhelmed which you would think someone like asman who has been doing this for so long in the in that genre in the mmo genre would be used to that kind of stream sniping because we've seen stream sniping elsewhere in competitive games it looks very different and there's issues with that too in like warzone or fortnite or anything like that but even he was saying he was getting overwhelmed but out of nowhere the dev square enix decided to ban some of the stream snipers yeah definitely an interesting call i think it's one that you know for the sake of asman's sanity probably had to be made yeah. uh, at least have the fear instilled in people to not do that anymore i loved asman when he one of his reactions was he's you guys got to imagine all right I'm, I'm much older than a lot of you guys watching when i when i look back on stream snipers it was you were playing with your brother or your friends on the same tv screen and you had to freaking trust that they right. weren't looking off where you were and all of a sudden they knew so he has that image set ingrained in himself of a stream sniper he hates them you know it's he called he had other words for it as well but uh obviously they're not I, I don't think it's as bad as competitive game stream snipers obviously warzone stream snipers or fortnite or during tournament stream snipers we've seen where it actually costs you money this is just costing osmond a lot of time osmond i, <laughs> I, I say asmund osmond uh, uh, Os. yeah so asmund and having the band people were upset about it saying oh this is streamer treatment which he makes a great point of getting stream snipe is streamer treatment to begin with a normal player would not be having to deal with all of this stream sniping is preferential treatment banning people is making it to where i have a normal experience it's like stream sniping is a negative one and banning them is a plus one that doesn't mean that i go to plus one it means i go to zero all i want to have is a normal experience so yeah, this is streamer treatment, but only because you did it first type deal. And so I think I agree with that. I'd love to see a dev stepping in to make a direct impact on a player's life, even if it is a streamer and you can kind of expect it. Cool to see them take action. Haven't seen other devs take action. Yeah, hopefully the dev just takes action fairly, not just because Asmin is is the highest viewed player, or one of the highest viewed players you have on your platform. Hopefully spread it, sprinkle it a little bit and make it a bit more even. But yeah, stream sniping, uh, and to a lesser degree, even here, not so much approved by as Oz, Oz, Osman, frick. And yes, it's going to be an ongoing story. I'm sorry, guys. We just have to keep you all posted because it's a crazy one. Yeah, we're talking about FaZe and its members. We have so many details out there about the situation. I'll try and keep it short, brief. But finally on the podcast, we get a chance to talk about this at length. And that being the ongoing accusations, not just towards FaZe Banks, which I'm sure he is dealing with on his own time, that's completely separate to a degree of the ongoing non-response. At the point of us recording, FaZe Clan members have not responded. That being Kay, who was removed from the organization. Um, some breaking news at the point of us recording uh, about within 24 hours of this, but this is a delayed episode. He's now removed, I believe, FaZe from his YouTube and his Twitter handles which does make sense. He is no longer with FaZe. We have three other members, his brother Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico, who have not given responses. Someone like Banks has come out to say a lot so far, one of which was him and FaZe Clan had no idea of these ongoings. Streamers had a lot to say about that. Second of which was he made the call to remove and suspend these members. And uh, also third of which, most recently, he has made comment on is there are serious legal ramifications possible for these members included, especially someone like Kay, which could even possibly be jail time. I'm gonna talk about the half of me that feels bad and like the, why I'm put in a weird position in a second, but like no nobody's saying anything about this. It's like, it's such like a, a, a delicate situation 
um because like like you said like somebody could go in jail for this people are gonna get caught out we say this every time someone's getting caught out in a lie i feel like being more involved than maybe they said they were or just fingers pointed at one person something is going on dude and so i'm curious to see i think everyone obviously is curious to see what it's going to be because someone's going to be getting major flack from the internet and major uh, discrediting i would say in the scene yeah and uh I, he also made sense of why there is a delay because this is such a serious situation none of these players probably want to come out and maybe miss word a statement but i, I will say for me, I thought we were expecting an apology, at least by now. Banks has even further said that there's no guarantee these FaZe members will be allowed back. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a big rift out there. There's some diehard FaZe fans. I don't mind where y'all are coming from. And there's the opposing side, understanding that there is a history here, especially tied to someone like FaZe Banks, where there have been some questionable choices and a lack of trust for someone like that. Uh, Banks himself, and we're probably going to do, we've already done a separate video on this as a solo, you know, why he is under fire currently is because he is making the call to fire and suspend these members and coming out and saying how they, they pissed their opportunity away and he's just so disappointed. And he's also currently facing accusations, or at least was, from Bank Social, a different crypto token. Here's how confusing this is, and I'll keep it to this main point, is a Mashable, a different website, did an interview with the CEO of Bank Social, a cryptocurrency that CEO directly accused FaZe Banks of pumping and dumping, which obviously would be hypocritical if true because he is kicking and firing members right. for pumping and dumping. Now, what's weird is because eight days after that interview, it's Bank Social responding to FaZe Banks on Twitter saying, no hard feelings, man. It's all good. So just feel feel with me here, guys. It's freaking confusing to understand what is going on, and nobody truly knows. I want to believe that Banks has learned his lesson by Me this too. point. And watching even some of maybe some of the other podcasts when we've talked about him in different situations, I've even said, man, it seems like he's gotten really smart in the scene lately. He knows what he's doing. He knows what people should not do and mess around with and knows how to generate views and pick out talent. And so I want to trust that, hey, he knows better than to get involved with these sort of things. And maybe that bank social group, Maybe they kind of spoke out of their butt a little bit at first, and they're biting back on their words. They gave into the kind of the hype of what was going on with FaZe, and were like, hey, yeah, us too. Or maybe they're telling the truth, and Banks really did make this mistake as well, and he's trying to cover it up. But like you said, we just don't know at this point, and eventually some bombs are going to be dropped. It's, it's just crazy. Banks has now responded saying that interview was taken out of context, but mm. there was a direct quote in the interview that the CEO said they pumped and dumped it. Right. So I don't know. For me, as a, just a, an average man, I just look at that and say, how is that taken out yeah. of context? I do think there's a lot more coming from people that I've talked to. There's going to be a lot more videos coming out about this. Not might many, have to be a while, though. Yeah, it, it might be some time, but I think there will be potentially it's really hard we've seen so many scams out there so many terrible things happen with nobody facing any time nobody facing really any punishment i mean i come from the csgo lotto csgo wild days where nobody went to jail so it's hard for me to sit here and say yeah someone's probably gonna really gonna get punished here because i don't think so does someone deserve a hefty punishment whether it be a fine right or, I mean, it's 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 just crazy that someone could be facing jail time for a simple couple of tweets or doing this a few times. I'm not saying it's deserved or not, but it's crazy where we've come. I mean, this just came, I feel like it came out of nowhere. Hey, man, what are you in for? Oh, I say I didn't save the kids. <laughs> I tweeted about a fake internet coin and made money. And all the other people <laughs> in prison are like, what the f- what? <laughs> Get this guy out of here. It's like, ah, I failed to save the kids, so now I'm here. I don't know. It's just, it's a complicated matter, so I hope everyone can be a bit level-headed about it, understand where both sides are coming from. I do understand the diehard fans, right? You're a loyal fan base. Yeah. You want to support those you love, but I totally understand the opposite side as well, that being the doubt and distrust, and uh, we will see what happens. We'll wait for responses, and we'll see what goes down with FaZe Clan and their members who are involved with the Save the Kids scandal. With FaZe Banks in the news, also his roommate in the news, Aiden Ross, who received a ban, might be involved. Actually, not even might. Def- oh, esports news, dude. D- definitely <laughs> was. Okay, he lives with esports people, lives with FaZe Banks, one of the biggest streamers on the platform, fastest growing. I oh, understand. Man. Or esports, by the way. But it was on Twitch, and we are talking about ban consistency it's once so again. Bro. 
because Twitch is just kind of weird about that. We've seen issues in the past, obviously, with hot tub streams, ASMR streams, and what people are or are not being banned for as far as maybe suggestive content goes. And in this case, we had Aiden on his phone driving an IRL stream and checking chat constantly while he was driving. And Jake and Bake, not Jake Lucky, Jake and Bake. Holy frick, the DMs I got, Makes bro. a big deal about this. Uh, and just calls out Switch of saying, hey, I got banned for checking my phone once in an IRL stream. This guy checked it a gazillion times and didn't get banned. Where's the consistency? Yes, and it was not only Jake and Bake. I believe there were a few other streamers yeah. who either shortly after Jake or right around the same time called out Aiden. It was public, and yes, Twitch did take action, which I'm glad they did here. You cannot, and I know there's a lot of diehard fans out there. It's a That Aiden fan base, let me tell you, it's a crazy Ooh. fan base. <laughs> I, I'm not even that Jake, and I've still been getting DMs about because I made a tweet about it like after Jake, after yep. he was already banned, and people still blame me for getting him banned no him breaking the law on live stream you force twitch's hand when you yeah. break the law and you record yourself doing it on their platform they can't afford to be making headlines where aiden ross gets away with you know breaking the law and the, the, they'd probably call it texting while driving but checking his twitch chat while driving twitch cannot afford that so it was only a matter of time even if jake didn't call it out someone else was going to right and uh i do think it's a deserved punishment for me personally, uh, we had Aiden say that it could be permanent. I don't think it deserves a permanent ban. Let's get that clear. I also don't think it's going to be a permanent ban. Two things I'll point out in that would be one of, reportedly, one of his mods said that it's not a permanent ban and that this is likely just stirring up of hype. Oh, what? <clears throat> so Who would do that? Not Aiden. Not the hype house. No. <laughs> hey, dude, old times, old time. All right. And now it's a cloud house. Formally. Oh, that's right. Yeah, idiot. Not for cloud, certainly. They wouldn't do it. <laughs> and so that it makes you feel some type of way. It's not a permanent ban. Yeah. <laughs> Don't seem so sad. Oh, wait, so, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm just saying like it's not. But now I'm may, most likely. I probably shouldn't say 100%. And so then the other side, which a lot of people, you'll see some Aiden fans, some not, saying, oh, he's just checking his phone. Everyone checks their phone while they're driving, which... I'm yes, that's fine. I understand people do that, but the difference here is that you're on Twitch's platform. You're breaking TOS, and they would be in so much trouble if, say, they let this go. Then another IRL streamer is checking their phone, runs into a a mom, <laughs> walking across the street. Yes, you have to think. Of and they say, scenarios. "Oh, well, you guys let those people do it, so you're enabling what yes. just happened." And so, of course, they have to step in and do something. Probably not a permanent ban, like we said. But we, uh, it's good to see consistency. Yeah, opinion. it's like a cop driving up alongside you and driving along with you, and you pull your phone out. That's You are live streaming to tens of thousands of people, and you are putting yourself out there on someone else's platform. I, even Aiden Ross, okay, admits that he is in the wrong. And, and there's still fans that defend him. Very apologetic, He doesn't by want the, way. the defending. Like, he literally says, I am in the wrong here. Yeah. And I do think, at the end of the day, you know, this guy, this, this kid, he's a young guy, is given a lot of flack, and some for rightful reasons. Um, but I, I like that he can admit when he's wrong, and he is real smart about stirring this stuff up. Just the fact that he can go out there and say, I think it's perma, guys, when he probably, I think he knows it's not. Yeah. And that, you, me and you talked about this, for his return, it, it's going to be as hype as ever. off. For him and his fan base, they will love this. Like, yes, free Aiden worked, man. Like, he's back. Like, I thought yeah. he was perma. Like, when in reality, he never was. But at the end of the day as well, what a dumb thing to do. Like <laughs> real, real stupid stuff to to do that and not expect the punishment. I'll just end my point at least by saying that yes, to recap, I agree with the ban. I do think he's apologetic. I respect that. I respect him coming out and saying, Hey, this is my bad. I should not have done it and making no excuses. He even goes out of his way to say it's no one's fault but mine, as if taking some of the blame from Jake and Bake, because he knows people are gonna flame him. Which he did get flamed a lot. I cannot imagine what Jake and Bake's DMs are like. Right. Gotta be awful. He exposed a couple of them, and they're awful. And so then owns up to it, but at the end of the day, still farming the views. Still getting oh cloud God. out of it because he's, uh, yeah, he's smart. Oh might God. be a little cringy. We might not love everything he does, but he knows how to get his views in no matter what the situation. Yeah, and uh, Aiden Ross will see what he does next. A Twitch permanent ban, we will find out sometime soon.
Warzone accusations, or I should say hackusations, do continue. This one is uh, a complicated matter. You got to watch all the videos involved, and it's, it's a very complex thing that isn't really fun to dive into because no matter what stance you take, no matter how you present your the information or your side or their side, people are pissed off. This is actually around a Warzone Pro and streamer known as Mutex who was now accused of cheating because they found an old Kronos application on his desktop. He's been sequentially called out by someone like Bad Boy Beeman who has a history in the space of calling out so many names. And where this gets so complicated is the fact that he has this old Kronos app and he explains as to why him being a former Call of Duty pro to give you guys a TLDR. Uh, these Kronos maxes, they have these tournament modes or these Kronoses, I should say, have these tournament modes which help avoid the Bluetooth interference at LAN events where all these people would come in, all their cellular devices would interrupt mm -hmm. with your connection. So pros were required to hop on a Kronos, put it in tournament mode, and it helped uh, not with that interference. Now, there was a slight delay when you plug that in, so pros would actually practice with it at home to get used to that delay. The problem also being we're in an online era where you really can't track you know, who's using a Cronus for the mods or for the tournament mode. So it definitely at face value is very suspicious, but Mutex explaining himself being a former COD pro, which is true, former COD pros used to practice with this, which is true, this being an old streaming PC of his, not even his gaming PC, which is true, led to so many Warzone streamers and pros coming out and saying, yeah, like we vouched for him. We don't think he's cheating and we, we agree with his explanation, but that hasn't stopped the countless accusations coming his way since it. Can't see the wire plugged into his controller. We will find the clip now though. Okay, so this wire that's plugged into his controller here looks to have the Cronus logo on it. The wire he's got <laughs> using now looks <laughs> Wait for this, wait for this chat, wait for this. <laughs> it looks like it's the same wire, right? Am I right? It looks like the same wire. Cronus logo, eh? Yo, shout out Battle Beaver. Shout out Battle Beaver. Shout out Battle Beaver. <laughs> this is the sort of thing I mentioned this on our other our other episode that only people who are in the scene would know about this. I certainly would not have known about this if it was not for the story that these pros are having to use this certain thing on tournaments and so they're practicing with it at home beforehand and so that's why it's on the desktop and so i think i can understand the initial reaction that people are upset you know and saying oh it's it's right there it's right on his desktop of course he's cheating because yeah you see that face value that's what you think but having so many people vouch for him and then he sets up five cameras <laughs> He gets five angles all over the place. This is why I want to keep it short on the podcast. We have probably several videos already out, maybe more in the future, because, you know, there are still accusations. There are still so many people out there that now will forever think he's cheating because of those accusations. I thought his explanation made a lot of sense. Um, his name was not cleared. I mean, there are clearly a large yeah. number of people out there who want to accuse any top name in Warzone. So yeah, he's now taking his stream to set up five different cameras. I can't even name all the cameras. It's a controller camera slash hand camera, a face cam, um, a whole, I think, so you can see his eye tracking. So behind the setup, there's one of his computer, I think, so you can see the cords and then one of everything. It's just, I, I've literally never seen a streamer set up five cameras just to disprove that he's not cheating. I can't even afford five cameras, so <laughs> I have respect for I this. I have one webcam, <laughs> I know. and it's not even mine. <laughs> and so it's funny. You see people still coming after him, comparing download dates of things on his desktop and going the that extra is the mile biggest thing. That is the to biggest compare thing. stuff. And it's like, man, I don't know. People would just go out of the way. He's going out of his way to try to prove himself. People are going out of their way to try to prove that he was cheating. We'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, we'll have to wait for more responses because there is still a clear debate out there. Um, it's very clear that there are some people against him, and there are many still for him alongside many top names in Warzone who have vouched for him as well. Speaking of god-tier players in different games, this time maybe no debate, a legitimate player. That is Asuna. 100 Thieves, 17-year-old god child. <laughs> I don't even Asuna! know. God child man player. Dude, I can't wait to go to land with you and we can just be like, Suna! <laughs> Actually, we're just going to mispronounce everyone's names <laughs> and get roasted for it. We're not going to know their first or their gamer tag. Just like, you're the 100 Thieves dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, in their match against version 1, he pulls off 48 kills in a single match, which is the VCT record. And so just kind of mind-blowing that that is possible and that he is 17 years old. 
I, what were you doing at 17? Shut the frick up, okay? Don't <laughs> I, I would know graduating high school trying to get my first kiss still. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, like these are simple like numbers, and it's so cool to see because you have, I believe, Nate Shot reacting to it. And uh, I mean, these are literally like it makes me think of simple from CSGO, mm-hmm. a guy who would, you know, prominently known for his amount of kills. And yes, the Valorant scene is so early on, so I'm sure the record will be a, a broken eventually, but someone has to set it, right? Someone has to set it at a, at a notion of like, whoa. You know, this, this ain't like 34. It's like, that's freaking good. This is far and above that. It's like, yeah. oh my God, you're 17 and you're doing these kind of things. And he's he's long and Ben. He's been the young gun for 100 Thieves that people have been like, yeah. all right, this is a killer signing for them. And he continues to showcase that. But to do it also against one of North America's supposed best in V1, you, you really can't argue too much. But it was so cool, especially with Valorant being so hype right now. That's what everyone talks about when it happens. Like, you go on your timeline after this yeah. happens, everybody's talking about it. It's got to feel so good. I say this in my video. Dude, what's it got to feel like for him? It's got to feel so good to have your boss, the CEO of the organization that you professionally played for, tweet out. One of the most out. notorious COD pros ever is yes. your boss. And he's like, he's the, this is memorable. We're going to remember this. <laughs> like, you're the guy. And, like, yeah. <laughs> and it's cool to watch. I watched back all the kills today. Like the entire oh, montage. Yes, I watched the montage of it. <laughs> just, just pow, pow, pow. And it's incredible to see the confidence, A, that he plays with, and B, the confidence that his team has in him. Because they just, they literally just let Asuna go frag. Just go entry frag, get as many kills as you can, and just be a uh, ticking Dude, time bomb. I've seen so many freaking memes uh, of the boys, like where it's Asuna f- far ahead, and you got a couple of the others, uh, like maybe like Steel, uh, maybe like uh, still long behind him, and then you got Hiko way back, like flying a drone. <laughs> He's like way back in spawn. It's like the funniest things are coming out of this. The old men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like watching their youngins go off and be like, you do you, son. You do Which you. is kind of cool to see these older players almost enabling this new filthy player at the game who's way younger and maybe not helping him with the game, but you know what I'm trying to say. Kind of ushering in this new player who's amazing. I, I like it. I, I really I can't stress enough. Like what's that what does that have to feel like? Cause I, I barely can remember when I was seventeen and how, you know, just not naive, but you know that you were kind of just you were you were aloof, right? You're just living life. I was dressing up for Spirit Day at high yeah, school. I was paying Dollar Jeans days. Like you're <laughs> 17, you are the top fragger on your team. You're setting these VCT records. You're not only bossed by one of the most notorious names in COD and Nade Shot, but you're around these CS:GO legendary names, especially someone as tenured as both Steel and Hiko. Yeah. And you're the guy. Like, and you're playing with with Nitro as well. Not to mention, like, you <laughs> and you are somehow the guy. Asuna's is doing great things. I-, I can't wait to see him more in the news. It's cool to see these young players, because I wasn't a big part of CSGO or a big part of the beginning of most esports. Actually, any esport, I was not around for the very beginning of. And so it's cool to see the beginning of a new one where you see these young players that you can think in your head like, oh, that's going to be the next so-and-so. We know this person's Like guilty. 10 years from now. Yeah, what's this going to look like later on? And so I really enjoy that. I will say a couple of side notes that we have seen. Uh, I think it was an Indian player in the TEC make 49 kills in a single match, and that's the only one I've heard of. People were talking about screams as of recording this they haven't finished the series but screams in master one had what people think was the series record for most kills which is like 90 something and so likely we might see asuna break that as well if he got you know 48 in a single match yeah so i think big things to come i love seeing these these young players crush it yes 100 thieves asuna aka the godchild As per usual, I hope you guys all enjoy the Esports Rewind Wad West. Until next time, you take care of yourselves, all right? Thanks for leaving comments and a like, and we'll see you uh, later. Later!